and more attention was given to the external beautification of the blade itself. Designing the hemon, the pattern along the edge of the blade, became an art in itself. A kind of abstract painting on a steel canvas. Different smiths created signature hemon patterns on their swords, such as a heartbeat, cherry blossoms, or crab's claws. During this long peace, the samurai fought an increasingly desperate battle to keep their identities, their reason for being. Mock battles were held at the foot of Mount Fuji. Martial arts such as kendo flourished in the absence of real war. The samurai needed a new purpose in life. The shogun's government began to build the entire society on the rhetoric of warrior ideals. Bushido became not just the way of the samurai, but the way of Japan. And the samurai themselves, they became the enforcers of social order. Ironically, it was only during this unprecedented time of peace that the first formal written version of the Code of Bushido was written down by a samurai named Yamaga Soko. Yamaga's most famous student and a romantic believer in the Code of Bushido was Oshi Yoshio, who led the famous raid of the 47 royal retainers of Akko in 1702 a story that has become one of the defining legends of Japanese culture, told and retold in countless books, plays, and movies. As the story goes, in 1701, Lord Asano was publicly insulted by the Lord Kira, making him draw his sword. This was against the law in the Shogun's castle, and he was forced, in punishment, to commit suicide. The samurai retainers of Lord Asano, now ronin or masterless samurai, became beggars and drunkards for two years to alleviate suspicion while they plotted their revenge. Eventually, on a bitterly cold December night, they gathered and killed Lord Kida in a daring attack. Then the 47 ronin, carrying Lord Kira's severed head, walked slowly up this very hill, knowing that they had acted honorably and that they would probably very soon be dead. came to this place and in classic Bushido tradition laid the head of his enemy on the grave of their Lord just right here the actions of the 47 Ronin put the government into a real quandary should they reward this sublime expression of the code of Bushido? Or should they enforce the laws against vendettas that had kept the peace for so long? It was no longer classical Japan where the code of Bushido was the ultimate code. Now the laws that kept the peace were much more important. And so they were forced to commit seppuku, ritual suicide in the moonlight. The 47 ronin were buried here next to the tomb of their lord and their graves have become something of a shrine to Bushido but was the code of Bushido also laid to rest here well yes and no soon after the death of the 47 Ronin centuries of peace had finally turned the samurai into petty bureaucrats the samurai desperately tried to hold on to their remaining status 
fighting skirmishes with swords against the guns of the new government conscript army. Some became so impoverished they were forced to do the unthinkable, sell their swords. Money raised in this fashion was called Namida no Kane, or the money of tears. Faced with the threat of Western domination, the Japanese knew that they had to discard the old ways and adopt the new as quickly as possible. The samurai were ordered to cut off their top knots. Their swords were confiscated. Their traditions and privileges were revoked. But the samurai had ruled Japan for more than a millennium. Bushido would be far from forgotten. After the samurai had disappeared, Japan's new leaders designed their education system and social codes to preserve the values on which their warrior ancestors had prided themselves. They turned Masashige's loyalty to the emperor into an ideal. Unfortunately, this allowed the dark, militaristic side of Bushido, the love of death and blind obedience, to survive into the 20th century with tragic results. But today, the brighter and nobler aspects of Bushido, the virtues of loyalty, honor, and perseverance, live on. <laughs> Part of the legacy of Bushido is the universal politeness and mutual respect so characteristic of Japanese society. Time and again, the Japanese have turned to their samurai past in defining their national identity. In schools, sports clubs, and in the workplace, group identities continue to hold sway reflecting the loyalty of the samurai to his clan. Many modern Japanese are taught that the three great unifying generals together possess the ideal qualities of today's business warrior. Nobunaga's innovation, Hideyoshi's diplomacy, and Tokugawa's patience. All qualities which are embodied in this artifact of the feudal age of Japan. The value of a sword is far greater than its material worth. It is a repository of history, its owner a temporary guardian of the spirits of past owners, thus obligated to cherish, respect, and maintain it for future generations so that it can pass on to them the spirit it embodies. Just as the sword is the soul of the samurai, Bushido, the way of the warrior, is still in many ways the soul of Japan.